Welcome home and welcome to Sweeter Than Honey. Will you pray with me? Father in heaven, we stand before you today in your omnipotent presence to ask that you grant us strength. We want you to give us the strength to power through all of the tasks today, whether little or big. It is by your will that we live, O Lord. And we know it is also by your will we will not go weak today. We will not go lazy, nor will we fail to do all the things set before us, because you strengthen us. So thank you for your everlasting presence, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's word for today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13 through 20. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13 through 20. I'll go ahead and read it for us, so please carefully follow along. Hear the word of the Lord. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter it by are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard to way are hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. A healthy healthy tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a diseased tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will recognize them by their fruits. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now here we have since chapter 5, the continuation of the Sermon on the Mount. EMS, as we have been learning about different things from the Sermon on the Mount, we must remind ourselves that the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount is meant to be obeyed and not just admired. A lot of us have the tendency when we see the teachings of Jesus to think, oh yeah, that sounds nice. But we say, I can't do that in my life. And that kind of thought is very dangerous. Or when we hear things like Jesus says to forgive our enemies and love them, we think, surely, that sounds nice, but we think, surely, Jesus isn't talking about this person that has done great wrong to me. This doesn't apply to this case of my life. But the truth is, what we're learning here and hearing should be taken into full consideration upon every corner and second and aspects of our lives. It should change us and work us from the inside. And today's message is about what it means to follow Jesus. When you follow Jesus, there are two gates. One is narrow and the other is wide. Eternal life is not found by following the masses or the crowd, but by a deliberate, costly decision. A life dedicated and sacrificed to Jesus Christ. And that's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. And of these two roads, one is life and the other is death. The one that is narrow is life and the wide, the road that is wide is death. EMS, today we ask ourselves, are we on the road of discipleship or are we on that wide road? There are two ways to interpret this meaning of wide and narrow road. Because in a sense, this is all metaphorical talk, right? It means something, but exactly what does it mean? And we have to find out what it means. First off, Narrow and wide road could be referring to um, easy or hard road. That a life of following Christ could mean it's hard and that a life in the world is easy. But we know that this isn't always the case, that both lives are a mixture of these two, hard and easy. So most scholars will interpret this narrow and wide as meaning to the availability of it. That the road that is wide is popular, while the road that is narrow is the least popular and at the end of the day, as followers of Christ, the road we are called, the road we are called to is narrow. Yeah, as this passage is calling upon believers to look upon the road we are on. The Christian life is a path or road of righteous living between the initial call of the disciple and the final goal of salvation. One more time. The Christian life is a path or road of righteous living between the initial call of the disciple and the final goal of salvation. And the reality is, there are those believers who have fallen wayside from the way that Jesus wants us to have. Jesus is calling for urgency in our discipleship, in our path, in our road in this life to think and to look and say, where are you walking? And then Jesus has to be wary of those who are false teachers. Here, Jesus isn't just talking about Pharisees, religious officials, but Christian prophets. They will look, they will look, at Christ, they will look Christian and speak like Christians, right? These false prophets. Jesus says they're like sheep, looking innocent, but are ravenous wolves. And the way that you can know false prophets is through their fruits. One way that we can interpret this is to see that there are always those who believe in God and think of it as a profession, meaning they know what to say and the right thing to do. And yet you can see that in their lives they have taken their faith as a profession. Yemes, today Jesus calls us to see what kind of life we're living, what kind of discipleship we have, what kind of road we're on. 
the challenge is to say, are we on the narrow road or the wide road? And also he calls us to see, are you a follower, a true believer, a true liver of Jesus Christ? Or do you see all of this as like a profession, as something you can kind of put up as a front, as something you can kind of do and as a job even? Right? Do you just know what to say and do as a Christian life? Or does your heart actually love and believe in Jesus Christ? Are there fruits bearing in your life? Are there fruits of faith overwhelming and overflowing in your life? So EMS today, hope we can take this time to see where are we in our faith? Where are we in our discipleship? How are we walking? Where are we walking? At the end of the day to see, are we um, falsely believing in or are we truly and genuinely believing in Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. Heavenly Father, guide us to believe in you, guide us to walk this narrow road, although it may be hard and challenging. We ask that you would continue to help us and guide us. Help us to not be like those false prophets where we believe and, and, and uh, believe and with the mind that it's a profession, but may we believe with the genuineness of love and genuineness of faith. So we thank you for loving us. We thank you for being with us. In Jesus Christ, let me pray. Amen.